Hi, everyone, and welcome to our January 2022 Ask the Expert interview. Happy New Year to everyone. Today, we are excited to have Mandy from the Kentucky Blood Center with us today. Um, January is National Blood Donor Month, so we just wanted to talk about the work that the Blood Center does in Kentucky and um, beyond to help people in need of blood. So welcome, Mandy. Thank you for being on with us today. Thanks for having me. It's, it's fun to be able to talk about what we are passionate about. Um, so can you first kind of give us a broad overview of the Kentucky Blood Center and how your organization maybe differs from other blood banks in the area? Absolutely. So the Kentucky Blood Center, um, you know, was founded in the 1960s by a a group of local physicians in Lexington, um, strictly as a way to sort of collect blood products for UK Medical Center. Uh, eventually that grew to all the hospitals in Lexington. And then from there it has grown, um, you know, to cover many, many hospitals. We serve 70 hospitals within Kentucky and a few in, in surrounding uh, areas. So it's, you know, over the course of time, it was done as a way, um, it used to be a long time ago that all hospitals were collecting their own blood products and processing those. Uh, and then this different model came into play and, and you know, we were pleased to be able to, to be that kind of uh, seed that grew into this great operation today. Um, what makes us different than other blood? Um, two things, um, we, your blood that when you donate with Kentucky Blood Center stays local. So there are great national organizations that collect blood, but they take that blood and distribute it nationally. Um, so oftentimes, if you donate with one of those organizations within our state, it's going to leave our state and go somewhere else. Um, the other great thing about Kentucky Blood Center is that we um, are a nonprofit. So, you know, really, our mission is to get blood to the patients at the hospitals. That's, that's our bottom line every day. That's what the work we do and kind of what we pride ourselves on. Um, and so that is, you know, kind of what makes us special. And I think it's really helpful when folks get a text message from us three to four days after they donate, letting them know their blood's gone to a local hospital and which hospital. And that, you know, that means something to me as a donor. And we think it means something to most people who donate. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping it local. Um, so I know it's hard to determine a number of people that you all help per year, but um, can you give us just a, a broad view of, of what it looks like? Yeah, so we, um, you know, in a, I would talk in pre-pandemic terms, we would see about 75,000 um, blood donors come in and give red blood cells a year. Um, we say when a donor walks in our door, every donation can help up to three patients. That's because your blood is uh, separated into components after it's donated. And so what you might think of as a typical transfusion is going to be your red blood cells. Um, then your plasma and your platelets are drawn off of that product as well. So your blood product will theoretically go to three different patients. Um, and so we say each donation can, you know, impact three patients. So somewhere around a quarter of a million people could be impacted by the donors who walk at our doors every year, which is pretty amazing. Um, and we're seeing transfusions right now at hospitals at pre-pandemic levels or above. We, we saw a record number of donors a year ago, January, um, or not a record number of donors, I apologize, a record number of transfusions at our hospital partners. And so, you know, we know the need for blood continues throughout the pandemic. If they're not doing less surgeries, they're probably doing more now. So um, it's it becomes even more critically important that folks are coming out to donate. Um, give us a little of the background about the process of getting the blood from your centers to the hospital or treatment centers where the blood is needed. So we have a pretty intricate network of um, a system that helps get all the blood back to Lexington where we're headquartered for processing. So we have a huge facility in Beaumont Center that um, has labs and that's where they do all of the work in separating the blood products and getting it prepared to go back out to the hospitals. So when we have a mobile blood drive, we have um, couriers that come and bring that blood back to Lexington. Um, they go out to our donor centers every day. Uh, those donor centers are in Louisville, Lexington, Somerset, Pikeville, soon to be in Corbin and Frankfurt. So a courier goes to those places every day, uh, picks that blood up and gets it back to Lexington for, for fast processing. Then typically within 24 hours of you making a blood donation, your blood is split into components. 
We sent off your tubes for testing at a testing lab. Once those are cleared, your blood's set to go to a hospital. And these days with the critical blood shortage, blood is often leaving our youth center within 24 hours of donation, which is extremely fast um, for all blood types. So um, that goes back out with those couriers to our 70 hospitals. Um, we're keeping a close watch every day on different blood products and their expiration dates. Uh, like I said, in a critical shortage, you're not worried about expiration very much, but we make sure to move products around to the places where they're going to get used the quickest when they're close to expiration. So UK Med Center um, is the local trauma center in the center part of Kentucky. And so a lot of blood gets transfused pretty quickly there. So if we have a product that's close to outdating, we'll make sure we shift that into a trauma center to make sure it's going to get used and no product goes to waste. Um, is there such a thing as an ideal blood donor or kind of what are the requirements to become a blood donor? You know, I tell people you, the, the most needed type is yours. And if you haven't tried donating, it's certainly something you should try. We want people to be well and healthy. Uh, you need to be at least 16 years of age to donate with, and that's with a parent's permission. Uh, once you turn 17, you can donate on your own. Um, you, you know, you want to be in, in good physical health. You want to not feel crummy on the day that you donate because obviously, you know, a blood donation will cause a little dehydration and things. We want you to hydrate before you come donate. Um, but you know, it's really a matter of how you feel and how you're taking care of yourself. Uh, it's not a certain height or weight or, you know, person in particular and, and lots of people who you would not expect could be great donors every 56 days are, are those loyal donors that come in. So minimum weight is 110 pounds. That's just for your well-being. You know, we, we find you might have a higher risk of passing out at a lower weight than that. Um, but that's a, um, that's really kind of the nuts and bolts parameters. Um, and then from there, there is a health history questionnaire that every donor will fill out. There are certain things that can disqualify you or temporary, temporarily disqualify you from donating. Certain medications, antibiotics, um, and things like that might cause you a short-term deferral. Um, and then we would just let you know when you're eligible to come back. But you know, we encourage folks, come and fill out the questionnaire and let us tell you if you're a good candidate to donate. Um, we'll test your hemoglobin, your blood pressure, your temperature on the day that you donate. We wanna make sure you're well and, and suitable to donate. And then we'll um, get you into the donation process, which takes about 10 minutes. Okay, perfect. Um, you know, you, you started out the last last question with this um, about what types of blood is needed, but currently are there any blood shortages of specific types or anything that's more needed? Yeah, I would say right now, but there's blood shortages of every type, unfortunately, but uh, if you're an O donor, if you have O negative or O positive blood, you're always in need. Um, when there is a trauma and they don't have time to type the patient's blood, um, O negative blood can be given to anyone. And so that's what goes the quickest. Um, and if you think about a trauma situation where maybe a patient needs 50 units of blood, oftentimes th that has to happen before they can type the blood. So um, that's always in short supply, no matter if we're in a critical shortage across the country or not. So I'd encourage you if you are an O donor, or if you don't know your blood type, it's a great way to find out. Once you donate within uh, a week, we'll post your blood type in your patient portal and your donor portal, and you can go see that. So, um, you know, don't, don't assume that no one needs your type of blood. Um, there's always a need, you know, like I said, we rarely don't use every donation of blood that comes into us because that's how important it is. So where or how can people sign up to be a donor? Do they go directly to the donor centers and that would be an option? Yeah, the best place to start is probably through our website, kybloodcenter.org. Uh, there's a great um, information sheet where you can find a blood drive in your area, type in your zip code, look by county. Um, or if you want to visit a donor center, if you're in an area where we have a donor center, you can find those, see the appointment schedules. We're encouraging appointments right now. It just helps us manage social distancing. It's not required. If, if you don't see an appointment at the time, you can donate. 
we encourage you to stop by and see if they can work you in. It might be a little bit longer wait, but um, if that's what works for you, don't be discouraged if there's not an appointment slot. Um, but that's a great place to find a drive. If you get on there and you can't find a drive in your area, but you're somebody who maybe wants to host a drive, um, we're always looking for new partners and communities to host blood drives, um, be it at your business, a school, um, even at a church or a community center. So, you know, you can find ways to reach out to us about hosting a blood drive on there as well. And there's some frequently asked questions that, you know, some of the things we've talked about today, but then other things like a medication deferral list um, that will tell you certain types of medications that may cause you to not be able to donate. Um, how often can someone, someone donate? So whole blood is typically what most people think of as a blood donation, and you can donate whole blood every 56 days, so eight weeks. Um, if you donate uh, double red blood cells, so certain people will recruit to do a double donation, and essentially you, you donate two, the, the equivalent of two red cell donations, but we give you back your platelets and your plasma. And you get some some fluids while you're doing that, and so it's um, it obviously a lot of people say they feel great after they do double red donations. That's certain blood types, heights, and weight. So um, our phlebotomist will talk to you about that in the screening process. If you do that donation, it, it delays you 112 days, so it can be done less often, but you're giving twice as much. And then um, we have a lot of loyal platelet donors who um, are recruited for platelet donation, and they can donate every 14 days. Um, and then you mentioned, you know, if someone is interested in hosting uh, a blood drive, just go to the website and there's contact information there. Yeah, definitely. We have a recruitment specialist that work all over the state and there's definitely one assigned to your area and we can make sure that you um, can get in touch with the right person and they can go through the kind of the parameters. We look for certain things. Um, we do have blood mobiles we can bring out to your place of business or your church, but we also love to host things in fellowship halls or large indoor spaces, and we can convert those into what seems like a tiny little donor center pretty quickly. Our crews are quite amazing. They can set that up and be ready to go in 40 minutes. So, yeah. Okay. Um, if someone is not eligible or not able to donate for any reason, is there anything else that they can do to support the Kentucky Blood Center? Yeah, I would say number one, um, never assume that if you've been deferred in the past that you that, that might not have changed. So we always tell people to check back regularly about certain things. Um, the FDA routinely revises regulations. Just recently, um, they cleared a lot of military donors who'd been deferred for serving overseas. Um, and we were able to welcome those donors back, which was a huge win for us in the middle of a pandemic. Um, the other thing would be advocate for blood donation. Even if you're, you know, I tell people tell me all the time, I can't donate, I passed out. I understand. And there's lots of things. My dad was a loyal blood donor my whole life. He is on blood thinners now and he can't donate. And so he actually is the chairperson and hosts a blood drive at his church. And so you could be a chairperson. You can encourage other people to donate. Um, it's, you know, certainly something that, um, we love it when people can donate themselves, but we love it even more when they go and encourage their loved ones to do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that was, that's all of the questions that I had today. Just, is there anything else that you want to share with us before we go? Um, you know, I would just say that certainly it's, uh, you know, a lot of people are put off by the idea of blood donation. I hate needles is the most frequent thing we hear when we talk to people. Um, I would just encourage you to, you know, to try, try it once. Um, the, the momentary pinch of the needle really isn't that much of an inconvenience for the fact that you're saving lives. I think we live in a world where not many of us can be lifesavers. There's firemen, there's policemen, there's people who, who have those roles, doctors and nurses. But, you know, I'm just a normal person, but I feel like I am doing something special when I donate blood. And there's no substitute for human blood. We can't manufacture it in a lab. If, if people don't come in and roll up their sleeves, there's no blood on the shelves of the hospitals. And I wanna know that if something happened to me, there would be blood on the shelf when I needed it or my child needed it. So I would just encourage you, you know, it's my, I won't lie, it's mildly uncomfortable, but it's a, it's a quick pinch. It's really not as bad as you might think it is. And a lot of people who end up donating feel great about themselves, feel great physically after they donate and become lifelong donors. So I would just encourage folks to not rule it out because of an, a fear of a needle. It's, it's not as terrible as it seems. Yeah. 
And I just thought of this, but how long does it typically take? I know it varies on patient and, you know, if they have yeah. any complications, but how long are, are you typically sitting there? I would tell you the whole donation process takes about 40 minutes, but the actual blood donation where you're sitting there with the needle in your arm is five to eight minutes typically. Yeah. And typically no more than 10. So, um, you know, for a lot of people, they say at the end of it, I thought that I thought it would take much longer. Yeah. You know, we're taking a pint of blood. A lot of people ask that question, how much are you going to take? It's one pint of blood, a typical adult you know, female has about eight to nine pints of blood, a male may have 10 to 12. So, and your body starts rejuvenating and replenishing that very quickly within, you know, within a few days, your body has, re, you know, regenerated the volume you need in your body. So it's, um, you know, it's not like you're going to, people say, you know, another thing we hear a lot is I need all the, all the blood I have, but, but you're, it's actually healthy for your body because it forces your body to regenerate new cells. So it's, um, you know, it's a win-win and you're helping somebody else and you're helping yourself physically. Yeah. Yeah. And at the, specifically at the donor centers, I mean, if you make appointments, you know, if you can do it every eight weeks, it's, you know, no longer than going to a hair appointment every eight weeks or something like that, just get it scheduled. And, and I'm, I assume several people kind of treat it that way. And, Kind of you know, and I there. encourage people, yeah, to make your, make your appointment before you leave. That's how I do the dentist, right? And if I didn't do the dentist that way, I would never, ever <laughs> remember to make the appointment. And yeah. so we tell folks like, go ahead and get yourself on the books. Um, and you might find eight weeks is too frequent for you. I, I tried doing it every eight weeks. Um, my hemoglobin doesn't recover that quickly. I do it about every 10 to 12 weeks works out well for me, but it's, it's go ahead and put the appointment on your calendar. We will remind you uh, if you sign up for our emails and things, you'll get a notification when you become eligible to donate again with a link to go make your appointment. And that's also convenient um, and easy. And we offer nice incentives to donors. Um, we typically have a cute t-shirt to give out or other uh, fun giveaways that we're doing. So we just auctioned off our raffled, not raffled off. We just drew, um, from donors who donated over the holidays and gave away a brand new ATV uh, to a lucky woman who works at Fifel Medical Center. So um, we gave away two cars last summer um, to two lucky loyal blood donors. So, you know, it's, it's good enough to have the, the knowing that you help somebody else, but then there is a chance you might win big. Yeah. Yeah. We usually see you all out at the state fair and see your all's car. Um, yeah. So we'll we hope to see you there again next year um we enjoy the state fair i'm telling you we get a chance to meet a lot of folks that that how now have become loyal state fair donors they come every year and donate yeah. um some of them visit us during the year at our two Louisville locations um in hillview and middletown and um you know but they they come in wearing their state fair donation t-shirt from last year when they donate this year and um, we love seeing those folks out there yeah well, thank you again, Mandy, for being with us today. Um, again, Mandy with the Kentucky Blood Center. Um, thank you for joining us on the Ask the Expert. Thanks, Jennifer. All right. Have a good night.